have you been outside this winter and seen that little black stone fly everywhere? If, if you haven't, we're going to show you how to tie that little black stone for this winter fishing right now. Hey long riders, how are you doing today? We are going to show you a little teeny, the little teeny black stones that come out in December. So if you're about to go fishing this winter, you're going to want to tie these, these little teeny black stones. And let's get to the vice and show you how to tie these. And I'll talk to you more about it at the end. And make sure you check out the links below for the materials that we used and the links to where to buy them materials at the end of this video. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Now, on to the vice. We start by debarbing the hook, like we always do. And you definitely want to do these little flies, man. Because you haven't been on the water, and your hands are freezing cold. And you're having a heck of a time pulling this hook out. So you'll debarb it and it'll pop right out for you. We're gonna start with 70 black denier thread. We're gonna run it all the way back to the hook bend. And then we're gonna head cement it. And we are using a size 18 2X nymph hook. Where this, the hook is a little thicker, so it adds a little weight to this fly compared to a dry fly hook that's really thin shank. We're gonna use a thick nymph hook. Now you're gonna tie in two goose bites for the tail. And you only want to make these tail about I don't know, about three quarters, let's say. Yeah, that works. Three quarters of the length of the shank of the hook. So they're going to be really little because you're tying on a size 18. This is a small, small hook. And you want to make sure that they go out like this. The, fly, the feather has a natural curve to the side, like so. You know? So you want to make sure you bend that curve out so they go away from each other. If you tie them in the other way, they'll go in together. And you don't want that. You want them facing out. While I'm getting the other goose bite to, tie, to get ready to tie in, little tip is you, you hold that against, I hold it if on the top of the hook a little bit so when you add the thread wraps and it pulls down, it'll go on the side. So you gotta just put it towards the top a little bit, wrap two thread wraps, and if it spins, pull it tight, wrap a couple more thread wraps around it, tie in the other one, do the same thing loose. On this one, you know, you might, because it's gonna be, the thread's gonna come in the opposite way, you wanna, Put it low on the hook a little bit and it'll spin right on the side. Wrap a couple thread wraps. Once you get up to the about where your your uh, ribbing is going to be the end, you're going to cut these off. Now we're going to use these uh, goose by tag ends to help build up a bulk on the on the hook a little bit. We're going to take some of this ultra black wire, it's, it's really light wire, and we're going to tie it in almost up to the eyelet, 
I'm gonna leave a little spot in there and that's gonna help build up the body again and then we're gonna wrap this all the way back take our thread all the way back to where we the tail start leaves off starts the tail starts sorry and then we are gonna head some at it two quick pro tips one is we're gonna put a half hitch on the end of this because we're gonna use the 360 rotational vise to wrap the wire. And two, if I've had a lot of questions, what's this little spring for? If you can see, I don't have it in the video, but you can see I take the wire back and then the wire's out of my way. It goes in that spring and that spring will help hold the wire, your wire out of your way while you finish the fly until you're ready for it. Now we're going to start wrapping that wire towards the eyelet and, it, and we're going to get them wraps as close as we can. Now if you leave a little gap in between the wire, you have black thread under there, it's going to show through. It's not going to make the fly work any better or any less. And uh, actually I sometimes just leave them in there. It's easier to wrap the wire if you don't get them right close together. And it makes the fly look just as good with the ribbing spaced a little bit or tight. It, it's up to you. Style your personal pick on how you what the fly looks, and I don't really think it affects how much fish you catch. At least I haven't felt, noticed it. I like to wrap my wire up into my thorax. Um, helps make secure that wire down better when I put a lot of thread wraps over it and it helps build the bulk for the thorax up but you don't want to run it all the way up to the eyelet because you're gonna have to have a tie-in spot now you're gonna take your thread back to about one-third of the length of the shank of the hook and get ready to tie in our wing case. Now we got our nymph skin. We're gonna cut that about a quarter of an inch wide. Now we're gonna cut that out. Then, once we got that cut out, we're gonna cut it off, and then you're gonna have to take the backing off, the, plat the white paper. Once you peel that off, then you got it ready to tie in. Now we're going to tie in our nymph skin. You can see I left a little bit forward to help build up that thorax a little bit. But make sure you don't run it all the way to eyelet. You need your tie and wing and whip finish this fly. Now you're going to tie in two more goose bites in the front to represent the antenna coming out the front. And you only want them about one third or one fourth the length of the shank of the hook. There's going to be little teeny antennas sticking out front. So you tie them in and you want them, like, like the tail, be facing out like that. Now while tying, tying in these antenna or the tail, if you make them too long, you can wrap one thread wrap around and pull on the parts you're gonna cut off and make it shorter so that they match. Now, when you cut these off, you're gonna leave cut them off almost really close to where you started that skin in to build up more of the thorax.
Now we're going to use some of this black ice dubbing. It's uh, like a rainbow dubbing type stuff. And I really like it. It really works. It really puts attention to the fly. And the fish been hitting them like crazy. So we're going to use some of this. We're going to build up a thorax there. And you don't want to build it up too big. You want to use just a sparinglet because we build it up with all the other stuff we've been doing so far. So you're just going to put a little thin on here. And you don't want to wrap it really tight when you wrap it on the line. You want to kind of leave it loose because we're going to pull it out later with the dubbing needle. So you tie this up. It's right behind the eyelet. Now that nymph skin, you're going to pull it forward and hold it with one hand while you tie it down with the other hand. And you're going to just hold it down with your finger, wrap a couple thread wraps on it, put about three behind there. Then you're going to pull back on the nymph skin, nymph skin back towards the back of the hook before you cut off. You're going to pull a little pressure on there, then cut it off, and that'll make your nymph skin as close as you can. Don't cut your thread off, but cut as close as you can. Then you're going to put a couple more wraps around there and whip finish it. Now you can take your dubbing needle, a sewing needle, or the tip of your scissors if they're fine enough, and you're gonna pull some of that, you're gonna pluck that dubbing out, make it bushy, and that'll represent your legs. As these little pieces of uh, dubbing you pull out on the sides will represent your legs on this fly. Now, let's take a closer look at this very awesome little teeny black fly, stone fly. When I say that this fly is small, we're going to show you how small right here and show you a dime next to it. Marauders, I hope you like that fly. This is a must-have in your box. Tie them up, especially if you're doing winter fishing. These little black stones are all over in the water, and we've had a lot of luck with them, so make sure you tie these up. And I was really excited to bring you this video. Again, I've been seeing them. I'll get them out probably Monday. Here the weather has been like negative one. Negative and highs some days here in Pennsylvania have been eight, ten. Little, little too cold. I mean, you can't even find water, flowing water in the creek behind the, house, the shop here. You just can't find it. It's frozen solid. So Monday, it's supposed to be 33 or 34. And I'll grab the camera. And I'll go out and try and record some of these little stones on the snow. If I can find any. But And I'll record them for you and show you them. But they're everywhere right at this time of year. So, I mean, they start in December, but they last till like February. And I've seen them... Like a couple, maybe two weeks before trout season, all over up in White Deer. So, when the water gets warmer, we'll go fishing. And uh, thank you for watching this video. And like I said, you must have these in your box. Now, these little black stones really work in this time of year. So, thank you for watching our videos. And uh, you can see video videos earlier in the week here. Before I do this, make sure you check out the links. Below. If you buy something from the links below, it helps our channel out, gives us money in the bank to upgrade our equipment and stuff. Bring you better quality videos. It helps us out. It helps bring better videos for you guys to watch. And we all win. So make sure you leave the links below and you subscribe if you haven't so far. And now here's videos from the early of the week, our time videos. Here's a video just for you. It goes off what you like to watch the most. So it's just for you. 
personal video and right here is the subscribe button so make sure you subscribe watch our videos keep your lines wet out of trees and only give them fish a sore lip